This video is a second part of a tutorial on creating an app called the Tappy Tap app using code.org's app lab tools. So if you haven't seen the first part of this video, it would make sense to go and watch that now. Okay, so we're at a point where in app lab we have our start screen or home screen has been uh, created with all the user interface elements and we did a tiny little bit of code at the end of the last tutorial to action that so that when you press the start button it takes you on to the game screen we've got three three screens remember our home screen which is the the one we're seeing at the moment a game screen and a score screen so let's just check that our code is doing what we expect so we're simulating the app running now press the start game button and it moves on to the game screen before we actually start really coding the game screen and making the, the blue and the red dots appear on the screen, what I'm going to do first is I'm actually just going to add the little element of code that would take us onto the score screen. And the way this one worked was you have a, a timer that is running when the game starts, and when the timer um, expires, then it's going to automatically move you onto the score screen and tell you what your score was. So in order to do that, we're going to need to go to the control blocks and um, inside of App Lab here, we've got a, a bunch of different sort of blocks that are to do with controlling our code. But one of them that we have down here is one called set a time out. So it sets a timer and execute a code when a number of milliseconds has elapsed, which is exactly what we want. So as soon as we switch to the game screen, we want this timer to start. By default, it's set to be a thousand. Um, what we're going to do here is I'm going to change this to be 5,000 or 5 seconds, 5,000 milliseconds being 5 seconds. Um, and as soon as that time is up, then AppLab will execute the code that goes in the middle here. So we can go back to the user interface controls and we can find the same set screen block we used earlier and place that in here. But here we're going to say that we want it to switch to the game screen, sorry, to the score screen uh, when that timer has, has expired. So let's just test that, see if that works as well now. So we click on the run button and we're back on our home screen here and we can use the start button to begin the game and on here if we're playing the game there'll be blue dots that are whizzing around the screen that we'll be pressing and then after five seconds you can see it's now taken us to the your score is so to the score screen so that's all happy and working nicely let's begin then with the game screen itself in this tutorial, we're going to see if we can get as far as getting blue and red dots on the screen. Uh, as we click around, click those dots, they're going to move around the screen. We're going to switch back to design view. We're going to need our dots on the screen. So it's very similar to what you saw in the first video, where you're going to have some images. And in this case, I am going to give this a sensible name so I can access it easily, or a sensible ID so I can access it easily within the code. This is in my blue dot image and I'm going to use the same sort of properties and things that we've got in here to go in and choose it to be an icon that is a dot and I'm going to make that be blue like so and whilst we're at it, we can do exactly the same thing and we can drag on another one and we'll choose an icon that is a dot again and change this one to be red. And we'll give it a sensible ID here, red image as well, so we can access it within our code. So if we just run this as it is at the moment, when we start our game, we're going to go in and we can see the blue and the red dots, but where I placed them in the first place. So what would really like to happen is when the game starts, uh, instead of them being placed uh, in the same place every game, we would like them to maybe appear in different places. So how are we going to do that? Well, if we switch back to our code view, we can see as soon as we go into the score, uh, sorry, into the game screen here, we would want to change the position of those dots. So the user interface elements so are going to be in the UI controls here, and we can find these blocks here called set position. And I can drop one, and then let's drop another one of those on there. 
and that will allow me to control the position of these two elements. So first of all we'll control the blue dot image here with this one and the red dot image here with that one there. Um, what are all of these numbers after it? Well the first two give us an x and y coordinate of where the top sort of left corner of that image would be. So it's around about where the cursor is there in relation to that image. So where on the screen will that be? And the way AppLab works is that the coordinates start at 0, 0 up here. Okay, as you can see there, and as we go across, we can get, you can see it's just about 320 uh, across, and it's 300, and sorry, 450 down to the bottom down there. Now the image itself is 100 pixels across and 100 pixels down. So if I wanted to put the dot, the blue dot in this bottom corner, I would have to put it around about sort of, uh, somewhere around here. So two, so what did I say it was there? Sorry, it's 320. So I want it to be around about 220. And then at about four, 350, because I want to take 100 away from them. Bear with me as I'm just doing a little bit of quick mental maths there. So let's just try and see what happens there. So if I set this to be 220, so that's 100, i.e. the width of the image less than the total width of the screen. And on the Y, uh, 350, uh, which is the size of the image or the height of the image away from the bottom of the screen. Let's just try that. The second two parameters here are the hundreds and they are both the width and the height and we'll just leave them as they are. Just check this is kind of working and my maths is about right. So I start and yep, you can see down there we've got the positions now being set of zero, zero. So the red dot was in that top corner. Um, it wasn't exactly where we were maybe thinking they were gonna be because there's actually a little bit of uh, around the image, the red dot, the blue dots and the red dots don't fill the whole 100 pixels uh, across, but that's kind of good enough for what we want. Um, <clears throat> so at the moment, they're just gonna go on opposite corners. What we'd like them to do is go to random positions on the screen. How do we do that? Well, there are some math sort of code blocks in here that would sort of what you might think of standard math blocks there for addition and subtraction and testing uh, of values. But down here, we've got some math sort of features and one of them is a random number. So if I was to replace, I'm gonna go in the X position and then the Y position. And notice as I go over the blocks, it sort of uh, changes the area to a slightly brighter yellow of when I let go of where it's going to land. Now, it's only going to be 1 to 10 here, which would be no good. It's only going to be sort of somewhere just around there and just a little bit here. So I need to change these so that the X position is my, uh, as we sort of did again before, the, the position where it was my value of... Uh, 320 minus my 100 width. So that's going to be two, 220 in here. Oops, sorry. Zero in there and 220 there. So it's going to give me a number between zero and 220. And then for the Y, I want the number to go between 0 and 350. Um, I'm fairly confident that's about right, so we'll just uh, do the same for the red dot, and then we'll test both of those at the same time. So, 220 in the X, 350 in the Y, and let's kind of make these zero in there and zero in there. We could, I suppose, make the Y ones be a little bit further down so we don't go over the title. But I think for testing purposes now, this will be good enough. Yeah, in fact, first one I do, it hits the uh, there. Run our game again, and what we should find is they're in completely different random positions now. Um, let's give that a bit of a headroom then now of sort of uh, 50 pixels there. 
and 50 pixels there so it's not going to be sort of near the top of the screen it's going to be a little bit further down the screen try that again and hopefully well, we'd have to try it several times but hopefully it's not going to overrun the title here um what would be next after this then we've got our dots appearing on the screen in random positions well the next thing would logical thing to do would be make it so that when we're in on the game screen now if somebody was to click on the blue dot then it would move the dots around the screen we'll worry about the scoring kind of later and the same if somebody was to click on the red um, dot it would move those two dots around to different places so in a similar way we did with the home screen before if we click on the blue dot here and go to its events we can insert a little snippet of code that will sort of check to see when we are clicking on the blue dot we can just run that check to see that that's working and we can see there it's putting down here blue dot clicked uh, as we go so i'm just going to get rid of that log there and do what we want it to do which is essentially exactly the same as these two blocks up here now unfortunately there isn't an easy way that i'm aware of that you can copy the blocks in code.org so i'm going to go to uh, here and say that we want to set the position of the blue dot and we're going to set the position of the red dot so they match the numbers that we had uh, before so let's get with the blue dot there and the red dot here and then we can go in and choose our random numbers from the maths area again one of them two of them x and y again for those ones and we were going to go for you know, for 50 to 220 and we're going to go 50 to uh where, where, where we're going to go 50 to 350 here and we're going to do the same here to 220 i've just realized i really wanted the y ones to be starting on the 50 and not the x's i don't think they need to be it's just the y's that will start on the 50 no real need for the x's to be starting on the 50 so let me just go and change those all there as well So, so 220 and the last one here with my 350. Yeah, so I didn't really need it to come in. I just needed them to come down. So, which is why I'm sort of changing the range uh, on the Y parts, not the X parts. So okay well that's the blue dot one coded up we'll be doing the same again for the red but let's just check that that's kind of working now so we go on here and every time we click on the blue dot now it is jumping around and doing exactly what we'd like it to kind of do so we can repeat that uh code there so i'm going to go and grab a oops i don't want to set debug on this i'm going to grab an on event block and i'm going to say it's on the event of the red dot being clicked and we're going to do the same again so bear with me i want a couple of set position blocks so and it is the red dot and the blue dot we're going to move on both of them could maybe have turned these into functions actually but that's maybe going beyond what we need we can make our own blocks so we could sort of have a function here called change position and it would be able would be able to call that from there but let's keep it simple for now so back to the mass blocks we're going to need four of those again here So, 
and we're going to go 0 on the x to 220 in the x. And then we're going to go 50 going in the y to 350. And then we're going to do the same on here. We're going to say 0, 220, the x, and 50 to 350 in the y. Okay, let's just reset that, check to see that it's kind of working. And regardless if it is the blue or the red dot we click on, they are now jumping all around our screen. Okay, that seems like a nice place to stop the video and uh, we'll have a part three to show you how we do the scoring to effectively finish off the game.